So, you've raised one chicken. Well, I'll see your chicken and I'll raise you a packet of biscuits. Game on. Not quite the thing we're looking at in this week's book, but very similar. This week it's The Hunger Games, written by Suzanne Collins. This is a book uh, set in a dystopian future, uh, an action, an adventure, a political book, uh, now turned into major films, so you may have heard about it. So first of, the, first of all, let's have a look at the plot, and then we'll get back and I'll let you know what I thought of The Hunger Games. Okay, The Hunger Games. This is a book about a girl named Katniss Everdeen. Um, now, she is a teenager. I think she's about 14. I could be wrong on that. And um, she lives in a country, a loose term for this, this world, called Pan Am. Now, this story is set in a sort of dis fairly distant future, although we're never told exactly when. And the country of Panem is ruled over by the capital. And the capital is a city that lies in North America now, uh, in the Rockies, I think we're told. And the capital is a place of opulence, of wealth, of beauty and of technology. And this is where the ruling class of Panem live. Uh, Katniss doesn't live there, though. She lives in one of the districts that surrounds the capital. Now the districts are areas around the capital in North America, I assume, um, <coughs> that produce everything. And there are 12 districts. So, and each district is, and each district is separated from each other, and they all have their own individual jobs to do. Now the people living in these districts vary in wealth and, and poverty. <laughs> Some districts are more wealthier than others. Um, some have got uh, better goods. Some of them have got a better relationship with the capital. But what they all have in common is that they are ruled by, ruled over by the capital. Um, and they each, like I said before, they each have a job to do. So some of them produce food, some of them produce luxury goods, um, and some of them produce uh, things like coal and iron. Katniss lives in the 12th district, District 12. Now this district, let me just clear away the other districts. The 12th district is known, well, its job, basically the people in District 12 produce coal. That is their job. And this is where Katniss lives. Now, the people in District 12 aren't particularly rich. They aren't particularly wealthy. Um, and they don't have a huge amount of food or resources. So unfortunately, Katniss's father dies in a mine explosion when she's younger, and she has to take over responsibility of looking after a family, which is her, her younger sister Prim and her mother. Um, so she goes out, she goes out beyond the fences that encircle District 12, out into the forest, which is technically illegal. She goes out there to hunt, and she becomes a very good hunter. She brings back food for her family, she brings back furs um, and carcasses of animals to trade for other goods that they need. Now, unfortunately, it isn't a peaceful place really, it isn't a necessarily nice place, um, and the capital isn't, are in control of all of the districts. Now, about a hundred years before the events of this book, we're told that there was a war. Um, all the districts rose up against the capital to try and overthrow the people that were controlling them. Uh, now the districts put these down. They put this rebellion down. They won. Um, and as a reminder to the districts who was in charge and basically not to do it again, they did a couple of things. Firstly, we're told that District 13 was destroyed. Um, 
I think with like chemical weapons from what from the hints that we were given in this book the other thing that they did is they set up the games now the games are a contest and they're a particularly vicious contest they're actually I suppose you call them a blood sport and each district is required to send two children between the ages of 12 and 18 to be competitors in the games so each year two children from each district and they are known as tributes are sent from their districts to go and compete in these games and the idea of the games is basically they chuck all 24 competitors into an arena and the last person standing wins so it they have to basically go around killing each other um, <clears throat> and this is to show the districts that the capital is in charge but also to provide entertainment for the wealthy classes in the capital now in this year of the book um, during the time when they're picked and the tributes are picked randomly by lot and this year Katniss's little sister Prim gets chosen she's only 12 years old so Katniss can't abide by this so she steps in and takes her sister's place and volunteers to become a tribute and therefore she is sent off to the capital with her counterpart from district 12 the second tribute the boy tribute whose name is Peter who is a sort of uh, well-mannered quiet baker's son and they're sent off to the capital to go and train for the games um, and they get immersed in this world of politics and wealth that they've never experienced before eventually they are sent off to this arena to fight against each other and all the other tributes from the di different districts fighting quite literally for their lives and this is all done with the backdrop of the games being almost like a reality show so they're having to win favor with the viewers and with sponsors who will help them out when they are in the arena and from there we see Katniss trying to deal with this new world trying to prepare herself trying to get her head around the fact that she's got to go out and kill people um, and please other people and that is the story of the Hunger Games the Hunger Games. I have to say I had put off reading The Hunger Games for a while and I was a little bit weary, uh, not weary, wary of reading them um, as I'd seen the film and I wasn't terribly impressed with, with what the film had to offer. Um, but I, I finally got round to reading The Hunger Games. Now this is a book I suppose aimed at young teenagers uh, and teenagers. Uh, I suppose if you're up a year six, you, you would find this interesting uh, if you're used to kind of reading these, these longer books. Um, now, in, in the plot summary, I could only really touch on, on different elements of this because there's, there's a lot going on in this book, in a good way. It doesn't feel overwhelming, but there's a lot of layers to this story, which is, is one of the things that I found really interesting about it. We don't just have these sort of blood sport games where you have children attacking and killing each other. You've also got the political layer of the whole country of Pan Am and the relationship that the capital has to the districts and how some districts are a lot poorer and, and they're just basically trying to work to survive um, and some districts that are richer. And, and the author, Suzanne Collins, it gives us, builds this world for us, this sort of future dystopian world um, in, in, a, in a very good way. Um, she doesn't overload us with the details at the beginning, but there's these sort of sprinklings of of, ex of history of, of Pan Am and and, his and and the society in the capital and, and the background behind the games. And I found that really interesting. Actually, that's probably one of my favourite parts of the book is this relate the, the political and societal societal. Yeah, we'll go with that as a word. Um, aspects of, of this country and, and the relationship between the districts and the capital. When you actually get into the games, when, when Katniss and, and Peter enter the games, that becomes very exciting. Um, it's very well written and, and true to the name, you know, the Hunger Games, she spends a lot of time looking for food in, in the arena and the games. Um, and you're not totally overwhelmed. It doesn't become a sort of action story. It is an action story, but, but you also, even when she's in the arena, there's a lot of description and a lot of inner turmoil within Katniss and she, she tries to come to terms with where she is and she's better equipped for, for, for the 
situation than others because you know she spent her life hunting to to save her family so you have this inner turmoil with her and slowly realizing that this is a game you know literally quite a get you know not just a game to stay alive but a, a game in the capital you know and i found that really interesting that the people that live in the capital these wealthy citizens are are treating this like a game show like we might treat big brother or something like that because you know they're sponsoring candidates and and they're hoping that certain candidates will win and the game makers change the rules to make it more exciting it's not just a straight gladiatorial fight it's it's about ratings it's about entertaining the audience and and Katniss coming to terms with that is a really interesting journey for her um, and then there is an extra layer this sort of uh, pseudo romantic layer to it as well where she has to feign love for Peter to, to get on the good side of, of the sponsors and and that becomes really interesting because she's she's got these mixed feelings for a for a boy back home as well so overall I thought it was a really good read I was very impressed with it I was expecting something a little bit different um, I was expecting something that wasn't quite as in-depth and so I was pleasantly surprised when I read The Hunger Games. It's got lots of different layers to it. It has got the excitement of a gladiatorial fight between between kids, um, but it's also got these extra layers to it, the, the political and, and the relationship that the, the different districts have to each other and to the capital. And also this interesting backstory that you're dropped into bits and uh, a bit at a time the history of the rebellion of the districts to the capital and how they put them down and how the games began and what happened to district 13 now, i'm sure a lot of these questions will be answered in, in future books which i must hold up my hands and say i haven't read so i'm, I'm just talking about this book in it in itself um so overall i i would say it's a very good book very good storytelling engaging um right to the end um and Unlike some books like um, let's see, like Gone, this is you know it is a thick book, but it's not just the prologue to the rest of the stories. You know, this is a trilogy, and it's not just the first setting up everything for the action that comes later. This is a self-contained story, but it leaves you with some great questions you want answered at the end, and it, it gives you that segue into the next story brilliantly. Um, so I'd hi I would highly recommend The Hunger Games. Um, <clears throat> it is probably aimed at, at teenagers, I would say. But if you're in sort of year six and you're kind of used to reading these kind of books, I would, I'd definitely recommend that as well. There are some mature themes to it. You know, you've got people killing each other, um, which you have to sort of deal with. In, 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 and the author deals with it well in, in terms of the reaction of the characters. Um, but overall, if you're looking... If this sounds like your kind of book make the hunger games your next page pick it up off the shelf um it is fairly long it's about 400 and something pages so you've got to keep going but i have to say once you're into it there's so much going on that you want to keep reading you want to keep finding out about these different elements of, of the society and the history and then of course the games themselves um i mean it's inevitably going to get compared to the film which I have to say I watched first, which I think is unfortunate for me. I think I probably would have liked to have read the book first. Um, this is much better than the film. Uh, a lot of what the film missed out was, was the sort of subtlety of the political intrigue and, and the society and, and how the districts interact with each other and, and the capital. And, and I think that's what really got me about this book, which I really liked about the book. Um, it also doesn't have a huge amount of... Um, well hunger in the film I, I noticed but this really does sort of hammer home the sort of poverty in, in the districts and things like that so I'd highly recommend it even if you have seen the film go and read the book as well it's going to give you something else so until next time keep reading keep having fun and uh, may the odds ever be in your favour <laughs>